Welcome back AP Stat students. We're going to go ahead and move on to chapter six, which is looking at random variables. So in 6.1a, we're going to go ahead and um, look at discrete random variables. But first, let's start off with a probability model describes the possible outcomes of a chance process and the likelihood these outcomes will occur. Now, by definition, a random variable will take numerical values that describe the outcomes of some chance process then the probability distribution of a random variable gives the possible values and the probability that they will occur. Now, we're going to talk about discrete random variables today, and a discrete random variable takes a fixed set of possible values. And there's going to be gaps between those values. We tend to look at these as like shoe sizes. Like you can't get um, a 38.2943 shoe size. Um, you can't get a 7.293 shoe size. You can have a 7, you can have a 7.5, you can have a 9, you can have a 10. Um, sometimes you can have a 10.5, sometimes you can't. Um, what's available, but they're fixed numbers and there's going to be gaps in between. And because of those gaps, it makes it what we call a discrete number. Now, the probability distribution of a discrete random variable is typically listed out as a table. And your table is going to have um, so your random variable is going to be assumed a letter. So like X or Y or P or D or T. Um, and then it's going to list those values for that. So if my variable is X, I'm going to list my possible values here in my table. And then below that, it's going to list the probability of getting those values. Now to be a legitimate probability distribution, you have to satisfy two requirements. Um, your probabilities have to be between zero and one. If it's zero, it means they cannot happen. If it's one, it's guaranteed it will happen. Usually it's somewhere in between. Very rarely do we have a zero and very rarely do we have a one. And then when we add up all the probabilities, they must add up to one, not accounting for rounding. So if you get a 0.99999, it's probably because there was some rounding error in your decimals. Um, I wouldn't stress out about it. But if you add them up and you get a 0.87, there's something wrong there. You're missing some probabilities. So in 2010, there were 1,319 games played in the NHL regular season. Imagine selecting one of these games at random. And then randomly selecting one of the two teams that played. We're going to define our random variable X as the number of goals scored by that random team in a random game. And the table below gives the probability distribution of X. So the possible values for goals are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like no one scored more than nine goals that season. Um, and then the probability of scoring that many goals. Um, first thing, show that, prob that this is a legitimate probability distribution. And first things first, all probabilities are between 0 and 1. Now, our next thing is, is that we have to show that all those probabilities add up to be one. So it takes care of all the possibilities. So 0 0.061 plus 0 0.154 plus 0 0.228. You get the idea all the way down to our last number. We have to show they add up to one. So if we grab our calculator, we add them up. And yes, it adds up to one. So we have just now shown it's a legitimate probability distribution because all the numbers are between 0 and 1. And if I add up all the probabilities, they add up to be 1. So our next question is, what is the probability of the number of goals scored by a randomly selected team and a randomly selected game is at least 6? So the very first thing we'd like to do is go ahead and say the probability, and our variable is x, is at least 6. That means that it's got to be bigger than six and it will include six. So that's our at least six. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to look at our table and we're going to look at those probabilities. So it can be six. This is at least six. We're going to be looking at these probabilities. So it's going to be the 0 0.041, the 0 0.015, the 0 0.004, 
and a 0 0.001. So we're going to add those up all up and that should tell us our probability, which is a 0 0.061. And then we can actually describe that in context. So um, there is a 6.1% chance a randomly selected team scores more, at least six goals. We're getting to the point now where we really want to practice writing out what our answer means because as we get into a free response and all of that, it's really important to be able to interpret what the number means in context because you can lose more than half your points not by not doing that. So super, super important. Okay, so our next part is, is what happens, how do we figure out the mean and standard deviation of this type of a probability distribution. So our mean in these are also known as an expected value. So what we would expect to get as a value um, is the average of our possible outcomes, which each outcome weighted by its probability. So our expected value of our x variable would be every time I take my x value and times by the probability, x value times probability, and I add it up. So it's going to be the summation, summation meaning adding, of each x value times its probability. And when we interpret that, we're looking at, again, going back to the idea of probability. If I perform many, 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 many trials, if I do this many times, or if I look at many, many people, we would expect the average x value to be what? And again, we do want to incorporate that idea of many trials um, when we're looking at lots of people, okay? We're looking at lots and lots of instances because probability, again, is over the long run. Okay, since we use mean as the measure of center for a discrete random variable, we use standard deviation as our measure of spread. And then with standard deviation in this chapter, we're also going to be using the idea of variance. And variance is super important because it's how we calculate standard deviation. And it's going to be super important in section 6.2. So um, if this is our probability distribution, the variance is going to be how far away our data point is from our mean. So we're going to take our um, value, we're going to subtract the mean, and we're going to square it, and then we'll times by a probability. And we'll do that for each one. And we're going to add them all up, and this is how we calculate variance. Now variance is important because that's how we get standard deviation. And this becomes the most important part. Variation is standard deviation squared. And that's going to be really key to a lot of our calculations. And it's a very key idea. So that means that since variation is standard deviation squared, to get the standard deviation, we're just going to square root our variance. So my standard deviation will be the square root of my variance every time. Now, going back to interpretation, what does standard deviation mean? Well, it's the average distance from the mean. So on average, our blank will differ from the mean by about blank. So it's looking at that average distance from the mean, that average spread. So how to calculate mean and standard deviation of a discrete random variable on the calculator? Super nice, makes it easy. What you're going to do is you're going to be going into your calculator and you're going to enter your x values in list one and then your probability values in list two. Then you're going to go ahead and do that one variable stats. Now, when you do a one variable stats here, you want to make sure that you have list one in the initial category and list two as your frequency. And then we're going to be looking for these values. Actually, I don't think it's going to be the SX. I think it's going to be um, this one because I don't think they actually calculate an SX. We'll look at it when we look at this um, next problem. 
So again, there are uh, 1,319 games played in the National Hockey League's regular season. Imagine da, 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 same sort of thing we had before. We're going to compute the mean and standard deviation. So again, in AP stats, it's super important that you are showing how you get your answer and not just the answer. So I did it on my calculator. It does not fly on the AP exam. They're like, fine, <laughs> we'll give you like one point out of four. No problems. We have no issues with that. So it is super important that you are reiterating how do we get that. So um, our notation for mean is this mu. It is a U with a long tail in front. Some people say it looks like an M, um, but it's not. It's like a U with a tail in front. And so we're going to do the mean of X. Now, mean of X is calculated by our value times our probability. So 0 times 0 0.061. So we're going to go ahead and show how to get the answer, but we're going to use our calculator to get it. 1, 0 0.154, and we'll move down to our next one. So 2 times 0 0.228, and then we'll do our dot, 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 and then we'll go down to our last one to finish up. And so now we're going to go ahead and show you what this looks like on our calculator. So in the calculator, you're going to go to your stat, you're going to go to your edit, and that's how you get your list. Now I went ahead and put the data in here. So um, list one was my goals, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. List two is those probabilities. And so I made sure those were in there. Once you have that, you're now going to go ahead and hit stat again. You're going to arrow over to the calculation piece, and we're going to do one variable stats. Now you should probably already have list one here in your list, but it's super important with these ones that you have to count for that probability. So you need that list to there in the frequency list. If you were doing just a regular list um, stuff that we're doing, like calculate mean standard deviation, you want just one list, you would just delete this. You'd have this empty. But because we're doing a random variable, we're going to go ahead and just hit calculate. And this will tell us the mean. And it's 2.851. Now we're going to go ahead and interpret what that means. And why? Because they tell us to interpret it, and it's always a good habit. It is better to interpret when you don't have to than to not interpret when you don't need to or when you need to. So it's better to have it there than not have it there. Okay, so after considering many NHL games, And I would typically probably do many, many, but I'm lazy right now. And my pen is not always writing down what I'm trying to write. So after considering many NHL games, we would expect, and this goes back to the idea that our mean is our expected value, a random team to score. Two point eight five one goals on average. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about our standard deviation. So our standard deviation of x is going to be the square root of our variance. So we're going to do a square root, and we're going to take our actual value and we're going to subtract the mean. And we'll square it because we don't like negatives. And then we times by our probability. Now, again, I'm not expecting you to calculate this by hand. I'm expecting you to write down how to calculate it. So if for some reason you forget how to do it on the calculator, you could at least actually plug in the stuff and figure it out. And that's really the kind of the goal, is if you write how to do it enough, you'll remember how it works. And we're going to do plus dot, dot, dot. See? And you can already see where sometimes it doesn't always write. Um, 9 minus 2.8. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and go back to our calculator. 
and we're going to figure out what that standard deviation is. See how the SX doesn't show up? That's because it's not possible to really have a sample from a discrete random variable um, distribution setup that we have. So really, we just have the regular standard deviation, which is 1.632. These are goals. So now we're going to go ahead and interpret that because, again, it's part of the directions and always a good idea to practice. So on average, the distance, and you can always look back. Remember, I have some words here for you in the notes. So the X variable will differ from the mean. Okay. So the goal scored will differ from the mean. The mean of 2.851 by about 1.632 goals. Okay, so we've got our mean standard deviation all taken care of. So that's it for today. Um, I will see you next time, and we're going to talk about continuous random variables, and we're going to see that normal distribution come back up.